So you both discussed what you like about your roles and working with customers. I'm curious now what your favorite part of the engine is and if you have a, a, a story behind that feeling. Uh, James, how about you? With Rhapsody, I think because I came from being a customer, obviously I, I found it very intuitive. And um, that's one of the, the things that I really, really like about the engine. It's, it's so easy to teach someone, even non-programmers, it's so easy to teach someone like moving something from A to B and, um, and, and using the different functionality within Rhapsody to do things easily. I think that's the thing that I really like. It's intuitive and it's um, quite easy for people to pick up to do simple things. And then it's not so simple and restricted that um, people who really want to dig into it can do and uh, do more complicated things the more and more they get into it. Um, it's a bit cheesy, but I, I do love to see customers creating something new. Um, and yeah, it is the, the smile on the faces when they realize how the different things they can do. It sounds so cheesy, but that's the way it is. Sure. So Alex, how about you? Favorite part of the engine? And is, is there a story behind how that came to be? Yeah, so I have two, two favorite parts. And uh, one, uh, one um, I've, uh, I've talked to James in a little bit that we have similar pieces and parts of our engine that allow us to do a significant amount of testing before we turn the engine and the interfaces on. And that is super duper helpful because we realize that um, when we create our logic and we, uh, we turn it on, we're just guessing, did it, is it right? Did it, did it work the way that we wanted it to work? But um, within our engines, we have the ability to load test messages, run a bunch of them through, look at the output, compare it, figure out like, this is exactly what I wanted it to do. Or no, this wasn't, let me make a change before I turn this whole thing on and, and, and open the fire hose, right? So it gives us a lot of confidence that when during go live time and it's in the middle of the night when they turn on their EMR for the first time or they turn on this interface for the first time that it's gonna work. It's gonna work the way that we planned it to because we've tested it properly. And there's so many little testing tools to, to make sure that we know what we're doing all, all along the way. And the second one is the undo button. That's my favorite just because I wish I had it on my life sometimes. I've, I've gone down rabbit holes uh, on logic to say, maybe if I do this, and maybe if I do this, and 10 steps later, I realized, no, all of it was wrong. And I could hit the undo button 10 times and get back to the right path as soon as possible. So I appreciate that um, in computing in general, but uh, especially within our engine, when I go down the wrong path, I, I get that undo button. <laughs> James, do you feel Alex is being unfair there by naming two favorites and you only named one? Do you, do you want it out the forum to provide your second favorite tool? <laughs> well, I, I mean, it's um, uh, very similar to, to, to what he's been saying. We have a, a, like a version control thing within Rhapsody where we can roll back. So it's kind of like a, an undo um, button. And then, uh, as he said as well, testing, that's something that, uh, um, that has been added to Rhapsody in, in the last couple of iterations and it's made a huge improvement. So I'm going to hazard a guess that the, the tools that you guys both just mentioned will be a part of this next question, which is, I'd like to know about the biggest project you've ever worked on, what made it so huge, what were the most tedious, most exciting, most frustrating, most rewarding aspects of that. So uh, James, could you kick us off on that topic? Um, I've been involved in quite a few big projects, um, helping out on, on, on the uh, not on the sidelines, but kind of piecemealing work as and when, because we all help and divvy together when um, there's large projects and, and uh, work is needed doing. But the, the biggest single project that I've kind of taken ownership, we had a, uh, a customer come to us who wanted to do a migration. They were migrating from a, a eGate into uh, to Rhapsody, or they wanted to migrate to a, a new setup because the engine was being uh, sunset. And they came to us originally and they said, we've got a very tight timeline. We've got 70 interfaces. It's complicated because there's lots of different systems. So there's XML, there's plain text, there's um, HL7. Um, there's lots of order comms as well as standard ADTs. Um, can you do it? And we spent a, a couple of weeks helping them working out exactly how long it was going to take. And we said that um, you've got an 18 month deadline. We think we can do it in the 18 months. As long as we move pretty quickly, we can, we can get it done. Um, unfortunately, the, the uh, technical guys, their hands were tied by the uh, financial purse strings. And uh, I think it was three months later, they came back to us and said, uh, we've got the money. Uh, can you still do the work? And we said, well, it's going to be tight now. <laughs> 
Um, uh, but we can do it. Yeah, we can do it. We can bring, as I said, we can we can bring on um, more cost, more um, uh, uh, developers and help get the uh, the timeline down. Uh, another month went by, <laughs> um, and uh, we started on the project. Um, and yeah, it was a very short time for us to do it, but we, we divvied up. I was kind of the team lead on it, which was quite exciting as well. And we worked really well with the customer and um, we were training the customer while we were doing the work so they could hit the ground running. And what actually happened was towards the end, the customer was actually helping us do the um, configuration as well as us doing it. So they got to a point so quickly where they actually understood how it worked. They were using our um, uh, uh, integrations as an example so they could help and, and and build the workforce and cut their cost and cut their time down and we we made it on time and it was it was uh it was brilliant my f first ever massive project that was kind of leading up and it went really well so um that was a big one for me and you know it was kind of you witnessing the evolution of your use of rhapsody because that's how you got started using the product exactly exactly yeah so um i was originally a customer and it's nice to try and trans like you, you you rather than the customer going oh that is something that is sits in the corner and does the work you get them involved and they realize how how interesting it is this particular customer they were actually very very good and, and technical they'd written all this stuff in a, in a very hard to understand engine and they were relieved when they moved to rhapsody because they realized how much more powerful it was with lots of different uh, functionality and how much easier it was to use so yeah they're still a, a big customer of ours and a lot of the team there are good friends of mine now so awesome alex biggest project uh that you've worked on what made it great difficult rewarding yeah so the largest project i worked on was oh man back in 2008 they uh they reeled me into this nice project because i i, I realized that uh, they were taking me to seattle and it was the best part of the uh of the the year to be in seattle and little did they uh did i know that uh the rest of the year it's nice and dreary the whole time but they had me come out about one week out of every month for uh, about a year or so. And they helped me convert two hospitals, just like uh, James uh, from Egate to uh, CorePoint. And so what would happen is we would teach them a little bit, we would train them, and then we would do interfaces alongside of them. We would do our own, we would do them. They would look and, and make sure that uh, we had the logic correct, just like in um, the, their previous engine. And when that was done, it was uh, we were all happy about it. But their larger organization that um, spanned uh, about uh, several several states over there basically said, you know what, we're going to make an overall uh, ex uh, decision on what engine that you can use for the whole entire organization. So whatever it was that you had before, I'm sorry, we're going to go with Oracle Fusion, whatever that is. <laughs> it's not a it's not a healthcare interface engine. It is just an engine in general, and you'd have to figure out the parsing yourself. And they said, thank you for all your help, but in a couple, uh, in about a year or so, we're going to, you know, jump off of CorePoint. And we were sad about that. That was a little frustrating that we worked a couple of years on that, and it, uh, it had to go away so quickly. And so I went on vacation, went to San Diego, watched a friend get married. And in the middle of my vacation, um, Sonald, my, my boss at that time, gave me a call, said, uh, this customer needs um, our help right now because they're going uh, um, live on Epic in about a week or two in terms of their first phase of testing. And they have nothing done in terms of interfaces. They could not get Oracle Fusion working. They need us there. Can you fly straight there instead of coming home? And I, I asked how how the weather is in Texas. And she said, it's about a hundred plus degrees. And I realized, you know what? I'm not going to go back. I'm going to go straight to Portland, help them out. Um, and I met our CTO there. We trained up uh, their team because their team is much larger than the two small hospitals we first converted, but it's uh, a team for the whole entire organization. So they had to learn how to get uh, corporate up and running. We helped them out with that. Then the next week, we helped uh, create several of their first interfaces and get them live on all of their interfaces for their first phase of testing with Epic. And they were, they were so impressed that that is what their engine is now. And after uh, a year or two more of training them, teaching them, doing some of, more of their conversion interfaces, they started teaching their own teams. They started creating their own interfaces. They didn't need us at the go lives anymore. And they're 
uh, they are by far our largest customer right now. And they, um, it's, it's really nice to see that they are uh, doing everything on their own. And it's nice that I uh, w got to be a part of that at the very beginning. And they are doing things that are much more complicated than what I first did at, over there. And I'm uh, pretty proud to see them uh, do those things. So were you in your rental tuxedo at the hospital building those interfaces in a, in a hurry? It, it was funny. I, ha I said, well, all I have with me is a, is, is a suit and uh, shorts and t-shirts because I'm, I'm going out to the beach in California. And they said, buy clothes. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll pay for, for work clothes. <laughs> and so um, you, you guys paid for work clothes for me. And then, and I, uh, and I jumped aboard because I didn't have any of that packed. <laughs> awesome.